What's up guys, it's Dollmatter Matter here, and today we're gonna to be reacting to a new channel. So this is Lost in the Pond. Now I have seen this guy's channel before, I've seen his shorts pop up, uh, where he discusses basically the, the differences between uh, the United States of America and the UK, and a lot of the ones that, the, a lot of the shorts are usually about like the languages and uh, comparing British and American English. And the funny thing is a lot of the time it's about how American English is actually a more traditional form of English that the British have changed a lot of stuff, especially in the 1800s. Uh, but this one's a little bit different. This is the five stages of a Chicago winter. So obviously I live in Southeast Ontario or yeah, Southwest Ontario. Um, and it, it, it's it going to be interesting to me because I live in the Great Lakes region, but for people who don't live in the Great Lakes, I don't think they understand like the, the, variety of climate and weather and especially like the amount of snow you get is very different around the Great Lakes like depending on where you live in relation to the lake uh, for example it, uh, uh, Toronto and Niagara Falls get very different amounts of snow because of which side of Lake Ontario that they're on uh, you know usually if you're on the west side of a lake you're gonna get a lot less snow than the east side because of the way the wind blows picks up most of the particip precipitation over the lake and then dumps it on the eastern side of the lake. So Chicago being on the southern tip of the lake uh, is gonna be interesting, but uh, yeah. Anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. It's that time of year again when the autumn leaves disappear under a carpet of cold white <laughs> In fact, cold white comes to dominate the city and can be found on park benches, treetops, and roads where it subsequently turns into cold brown sh**. Oh yeah, Experience I guess we mixed it with the sand and shit. Just one but several stages to coping with the windy city's coldest season. At least three of them involve whiskey. For the perpetually curious, the job has fallen to me to guide you through each stage. So if you're not subscribed to this channel... Man, you know what's kind of fascinating? How much, like, less culturally relevant Chicago has become over the decades? Like, I, I believe it's still the third most populous city in the United States. Um, but you see this like, a lot of eastern cities, uh, especially, like, cities in the East Coast, for example, like New York. I remember back in, like, the 90s and 2000s when I was a kid, New like, 50% of movies would be featured in New York, right? So many movies and TV shows and this, that, and the other thing were, so many of them were featured in New York. But it feels like now you rarely ever see New, New York in any cultural context. Um, it's almost always Los, or, uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco, right? It's, it's Silicon Valley or LA. Um, Texas and Florida are starting to become more culturally relevant, uh, but that, that's kind of a more recent thing. But like for the past like 15, 20 years, it's really been dominated by Californian cities, which I, I wonder why that is. Because it, again, it just feels like... Uh, New York used to be in everything, and now I, like, rarely ever see it in, like, any mass media stuff. Uh, I guess it's still in, like, some Marvel stuff and stuff like that, but, yeah, same with Chicago. Chicago used to be, like, a, such a culturally dominant city, and now you rarely ever hear about it. Uh, I guess part of Chicago probably has to do with the fact that it used to be the second largest city in the United States, and now it's third, if that. I, I don't, I think it's still third, but I'm not entirely sure, but anyway. I'll do that now. For me, it all started in February 2007 when I truly learned the value of staring off into the middle distance. <sighs> I was visiting my then American fiance, who is now my wife, but uh, still American. One night, I found myself whispering sweet nothings into her ear, such as, Hi. Or, So, personal question. In your infinite wisdom, how far is the Sears Tower from this, the bountiful kingdom of Indiana? About 200 miles. Also, how is that a personal question? To me... Now, do you guys actually use miles down there? Like, I know, uh, not for measurement, but like, whenever somebody asks, like, how far is something up in Canada, you always just say, oh, it's like an hour away. It's two hours away, 45 minutes away. Like, you, it's almost always, get, the time is almost always giving in, or distance is almost always given in, like, the amount of time it takes to get there. Rarely ever the amount of, like, kilometers or miles that it is. It was deeply personal. To me, it is completely and utterly a little bit personal. For as long as I could remember, I'd harbored a fascination with the Sears Tower bordering on sizable. In the early 1990s, my dad had taught me it was the tallest building in the world. Now that I lived one state away, I had... Wait, is it? Or was it? Uh, wasn't the CN Tower taller? 
Uh, what would I do? List of tallest structures in the world. Uh, maybe that's the difference: is structures versus buildings. Does it? Yeah. You know, like, what, what's the different classifications here? Okay, so we got list of tallest structures. Um, okay, so these are all tower, 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 tower. Yeah. So it must be the difference between a a structure and a tower, because these are all just like for uh, communications. Where is Sears? Not even on here. Uh, or wait, maybe it is. Oh yeah, Will Willis Tower. Uh, so yeah, it's way down there. Like it's like fucking way down the list. Yeah, so CN Tower is right here. Concrete Tower. So yeah, CN Tower was built in seventy six. So tallest freestanding structure in the Western Hemisphere. What's the Willis Tower? Tallest building in the world, 1974 to 98. What's the difference between a building and a freestanding structure? I know that there's all these different like weird classifications when it comes to this, because I know like the 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 building nerds get like all mad on like whether it should be like in you know whether you should include like these you know long uh, telephone communications things or radio communications things. Uh, should you include like the masts on top of something, or does it just, you know, the highest habitable floor, or like all these different things? To see it for myself. I could barely contain my excitement until somebody switched on the weather. The Chicagoland area will see wind gusts of up to 22 miles per hour with wind chill right around minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 19 Celsius if you're watching this report from the UK for some absolutely bizarre reason. Finally, expect to see up to two feet of cold white sh in the early afternoon. Despite my initial concerns, we arrived at my wife's consensus and went to Chicago that very day. I saw the Sears Tower, marveled at its general height, and lost the will to live after about 30 minutes. Being absolutely broke, we opted not to go inside, which is a pity because I'd forgotten to bring my gloves. And earmuffs. And a proper winter jacket. <laughs> Being a stubborn 25-year-old, I quickly reasoned that it wasn't my fault. The blame lay squarely at the feet of the unrelenting tundra that is Chicago. I vowed that very day to never catch myself living in the Windy City, a promise I kept for almost 10 years. But now that I'm living in Chicago, I've learned two very important things. One, it pays to wear the right clothes. And two, living in Chicago and visiting are two very different things. Researchers believe that human beings remain the only species in the observable universe to periodically alter their clocks. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. Ooh, Lawrence, the clocks went back in autumn, not winter, so this doesn't gel with the rest of the video. I'm quite aware of that, thank you, but the effect that it has on daylight is felt most keenly in the winter, so shut oh, it. Oh, true. And of course, such clock tinkering is not exclusive to Illinois. The end of daylight saving time affects all states that don't rhyme with Hawaii or Arizona. However, it doesn't. What actually makes states decide whether or not they want to uh, follow daylight savings time? Affect all places equally. On December 21st, the shortest day of the year, Chicago goes dark at 4:23 p.m. In Indianapolis, where I used to live, 5:23 p.m. And this isn't just down to I... the time difference between the two cities or the. Man, I I, I feel that. I, I live in, I, the funny thing is I live in southern Canada and it still gets dark here uh, during the winter at like four in the afternoon. If you go to northern Canada, they have the fucking midnight sun and, uh, you know, daytime winter depending on the time of the year. Or daytime winter. <laughs> daytime darkness. The fact that one is more southerly than the other. It's also impacted by where they sit along those time zones. Indianapolis is at the extreme west of the eastern time zone and therefore gets darker almost an hour later than cities on the east coast. Chicago, meanwhile, is at the extreme east of the central time zone, meaning that it gets darker almost an hour earlier than central Nebraska. Between the two cities, Chicagoans might argue that they got the raw end of the deal. And from experience, few things feel as daunting as leaving work and catching the L train 30 minutes into nighttime, especially when Chainsaw Jim is on board and refusing to give up two of his three seats. 
On the flip side, mm -hmm. the winter solstice does see Chicago get lighter earlier in the morning than Indianapolis, which is good news for parents and my kitty cat. Because only an animal would dare to upstage me. Tragically, as a YouTube sensation, it's unlikely I will ever again be awake in time to enjoy this benefit, so post your condolences <laughs> below. Thankfully though, winters in Chicago don't entirely amount to one poorly lit hellscape, unless you're doing the midnight breaststroke in Lake Michigan, naked. In the run up to Christmas, the city breathes under the buzzing lights of Chris Kindle Market, Lincoln Park Zoo, and the Party City on West Fullerton. The sound of Christmas music emanating from the shops is enough to make this Englishman forget all about the bad stuff. Okay, that's not quite true. I mean, we've all heard wonderful Christmas time, right? The point is, the festive period has the capacity to touch the heart of not just me, but every Chicagoan, even the ones who sound angry but aren't. <laughs> At Christmas, even the cold white <laughs> feels pleasant against my face, and Mum, I hope you watch this video from the beginning. And that is so true. There's just something about like going to the Christmas parades, and uh, uh, about an hour and a half north of me, there's uh, a city, Owen Sound, that has this huge lights festival every year and they have um oh, i can't remember the name of the ship but they always bring it in there and they light it up and it's just gorgeous going and seeing all the different lights and stuff beginning while ice skating usually has the undesirable effect of annihilating my ankles <laughs> I can still enjoy the happiness that it brings other people and i'm definitely not here to watch any of them fall and yes, Chris Kindle Market, a German Christmas tradition in which people from all walks of life get to find out what it's like to be in an episode of Rick Steves Europe. The mulled wine, the bratwursts, the festive vocabulary, but in German. This is Christmas in Chicago. From the first Christmas songs to the New Year's Eve fireworks off Navy Pier, the holiday season can make newbies to the city believe that Chicago winters represent a sort of utopian paradise. But just as with fireworks, what goes up must come down. Stage three. The New Year drag, is that what it's gonna be? You're just waiting for it to end after New Year's? That's so true. The American author, Eric Larson, once wrote, I must confess a shameful secret. I love Chicago best in the cold. And mm. while that's easy to say when you have the world's most Scandinavian name, it ceases to be true <laughs> in my case the minute I hang up my calendar. You have to remember, I grew up in the English town of Grimsby where the average January temperature is around 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And as a child, I thought that was cold. Well, I gotta tell you, Larry, in the- What is, what is 38 Fahrenheit in Celsius? I want to check this out real quick. 38F in C. Okay, so it's just above freezing. Man, I, I I always forget how warm the UK is, right? The one thing I find fascinating is, like, when you look at the European climate, because of the way that, like, the the different, like, uh, water currents and stuff, it's a lot more like the West Coast than it is, like, the East Coast, or, you know, obviously than the continental climate that we have here. So it's, it's like, Europe's way warmer than it would be, like, than you think it would be, if, like, you know, comparably fucking high. The Chicago land area that same month sees average temperatures 11 degrees colder than that. For my inexplicably high number of British viewers, Chicago's January average is close to minus 3 degrees Celsius, making it the city's coldest month. Thanks, Cody. January is to December what the fourth National Lampoon's film is to its predecessor. I'm honestly surprised. I thought Chicago would be colder. It's not that far south of me. But, like, up here, I, I wonder what the average... Uh, uh, temperature is... I don't know if they'll even have data. They definitely won't have data from my town. Um, i trying to think. What's the biggest, ci biggest city near me? Guelph, I guess. Uh, do they have temperatures for Guelph? Uh, okay, so... January is about negative seven uh, Celsius or 20, just below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, so, and that's for Guelph. And depending on where exact, okay, climate data for the Guelph, University of Guelph Arbitorium. Okay, so yeah, that's like within the city. So it'll, it'll be a little bit warmer because of like the city heat, but 
Yeah, it, it's basically it's like negative ten degrees here, I guess roughly. I guess it's not that big of a difference. I, I, I thought, I'm actually surprised it's. Yeah, I, I guess they don't have good data for out in the country, but it'd probably be another three or four degrees colder out where I live. All downhill after Christmas. I'm a where bit once the, the city too, was though, so. vibrant, by January it descends into a desolate hellscape moonlighting as the third largest city in America. Shops are not closed but feel like they are. And the leaves, a thing of warm, fiery beauty in my October special, now implanted into the sidewalk like the Fallout Boy tattoo that my wife's cousin Chad claims to have on his ass. But just as that dramatic <laughs> image remains mercifully hidden underneath the unlikely hero that is his camo pants, the sidewalks too become buried under eight inches of cold white sh And it's usually at that very moment that I hear music. Oh, there he is. Hello. Oh, hi, Lawrence. Yeah, I see you typing there. This is Lawrence. How's July 2023 treating you? That's good. Yeah, February. Well, you've already been through February. Hey, listen, to make this easier and to advance the plot of the video, could you switch on your microphone and camera? Thanks. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Future you is having a fantastic time. Well, that's good to hear, future Lawrence, because, you know, February me isn't, I'm afraid. Well, that's not good. Did Tara forget Valentine's Day? Well, no, that, that's our job. Don't, don't you remember anything? Sorry, you know, a lot's happened in the last eight months. You mean five months? Well, no, because technically you released this special in November, even though you're playing the February and July versions of yourself. It's very confusing. <laughs> the point is, you don't know it yet, but you have a big life event coming up before okay, you even get to February. Okay, but I'm in February Stay now, tuned. and it's, it's awful. Okay, are you going to refresh my memory? I mean, it's Chicago, February, you know, when our seasonal affective disorder kicks in. Oh, that. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about it, you know, how we mentally assign colours to every month of the year. So, like, November is black with hints of yellow to signify earlier evenings and bonfires. And July is an intense orange to signify sizzling food and warm beaches. Yeah, all right. But ever since we moved to Chicago, do you remember which colour we assigned to February? Blue. Yeah. Blue, a depressing shade of cerulean blue. Well, come on, I mean, at least... Yeah, There's actually a big thing, a lot of people get seasonal mood depression. Uh, I think it's vitamin D, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's uh, Vitamin D deficiency is like one of the major causes of this. So if you get seasonal mood depression, take a multivitamin and it'll... it not guaranteed to cure you by any means, but it'll probably help quite a bit. Cerulean has the distinction of being a perfect anagram of our name. So it does. Very good point, very good point. But look, it's not even that it's Chicago's coldest month. It just feels like it is. I mean, it's also the shortest month of the year, and yet somehow in this city it feels like the longest. You you expend all of that winter energy at Christmas. You push yourself through January knowing you've at least devised a weight loss plan to keep you occupied, and then February hits, and you realise you've got to do it all over again. Except the weight loss part, and... I'm sitting here wondering, will it ever end? I mean, as somebody who's been through it, I can tell you this, right? It's just like all of the other years. February never ends until it does. Mm. And then you forget what the big fuss was all about. Yeah, well, I suppose you're right. So what was this big life event then? I feel like the reason people don't like February is because there's just nothing going on at that time, right? Like, there's no major holidays. I mean, I guess you have Valentine's Day, so, you know, girls probably like it. But, like, fucking... You know, January, you have New Year's, right? So right at the start of the month. Then there's not much that really goes on after that. I, February, you've got Valentine's Day. If you're a big football fan, you've got the Super Bowl. Um, then, yeah, you got March. It starts to feel nice. You've got March break. You've got, depending on the year, possibly Easter, right? Some years it's March, some years it's April. Uh, then April, you've got possibly Easter. It's even nicer out. May, June, July, you know, just the warm months. Oh, don't worry about all of that. All will be revealed in an upcoming special. Look, for now, I've, I've got to go. The weather report says it's going to plummet down to 83 degrees in the afternoon. Give my love to your wife, our wife. Yeah. Will do. <laughs> Stage five. This is going to be like second winter. I used winter. to say that I could only stomach... I I'm going to guess this is going to be like about second and third winter. This is something that happens in Canada. It actually happened just last week. We had... 
like two, three weeks of where like all the snow melted. I think we had a high of like 15 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, and it was, it was beautiful out. And then all of a sudden last week, it's just like negative 10, negative 15. I think it got down to negative 20 on one day and fucking just snowing again. And then finally this week, today it's plus 20. It's 20 degrees Celsius outside. So it's very nice today, but you know, 40 degree wet change in literally a week and a half or a week uh, from negative 20 to positive 20. But uh, yeah, you always have the second and third winter where it hits you again for a, you know a couple of weeks and then it goes away and you're like, oh, finally. And then it hits you again for at least another week and then it goes away and you're like, please fucking stay gone this time. Because <laughs> that's the worst, right? Like, Because during the second and third winter, you can't actually get out and do anything in the snow, right? There's not enough snow to go snowmobiling. There's not enough snow to go snowboarding. Too much of it's melted. You can't do any of the fun winter stuff. But like you still can't do any of the summer stuff because there's enough there's enough on the ground that it stops you from doing summer stuff, but not enough on the ground that it allows you to do winter stuff. It's like the worst fucking time of the year. Life in Chicago six months out of the year. But I think I think I was wrong about that. I think it's closer to ten. Around March the first, I don't know, something happens to my brain and the psychological barriers that winter had put up begin gradually to fade. Instead of cerulean, I now see mostly brown with faint hints of green, as if I were looking at a restoration hardware or an English football pitch from the 80s. Average March <laughs> temperatures in Chicago, Cody Dewpoint, are... Uh, let me see here, uh, about 8 degrees warmer than in February. But more than that, March is when winter technically comes to a close. And Chicago even finishes winter the way it started it, with festivities. The city's St. Patrick's Day oh, celebrations yeah, Patrick's more or less Day. mark the end of winter, with thousands of drunk revelers gathering to stare at a green river dressed in the very same colour, sporting complexions not far behind. I might be exaggerating a bit. Come to think of it, that might be where those hints of green come from. It's certainly not from the leaves, which, much like me, don't show themselves until the middle of April. It's fair to say that America is a vast country. No two cities experience the pain of winter in quite the same way, except for Minneapolis and St. Paul, but only because they're twins. While the US is home to several regions with colder winters than Chicago, no single city in England can say the same, not even Narnia. For that reason alone, I might never come to terms with stages three and four, and believe me, I've tried. I even dress like Han Solo in that bit where he slices open a tauntaun. And yet, I find his carbon freeze arc way more relatable. Isn't it Luke that slices open the tauntaun? I can't remember. I haven't seen the original trilogy in I'm, uh, probably a decade and a half, but... Thanks for watching this video and sharing it with all of your Chicago friends. Until the next video, There's goodbye. No. Sears Tower. Oh, man, look at him. Everybody's all young. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, the, honestly, the, the most surprising thing to me is how much warmer <laughs> Chicago is than where I live. The, I, I honestly expected it, you know, just because of its location, I expected it, yeah, it'll be, you know, basically the same temperature. It's not too far south. But it's almost 10 degrees warmer year-round, it seems. Uh, or at least in the winter, it's about 10 degrees warmer. The summer seems to be re relatively the same temperatures based on what he was saying, but uh, the winter seems to be about 10 degrees warmer, which is kind of crazy. I was not expecting that. I always hear people talk about like how damn cold Chicago was, and I thought it was going to be way colder because like where I live in Canada, it's known as like one of the warm parts of Canada, right? Like it's BC is by far the warmest, but like outside of BC, it's probably southwestern Ontario, right? The prairies are cold as fuck. Quebec's cold as fuck. Northern Ontario is cold as fuck. The Atlantic provinces are cold as fuck. I live in like the second warmest part of Canada, and it's still fucking colder than, <laughs> than Chicago, apparently. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.